um Samo Oyaki, um a native yoga boy <laughs> from Nigeria. I'm a, I'm a steels copywriter that um works on a freelance basis with um several companies, um, especially digital marketing agencies. Hello and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi A14, and I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. I've been into this for um, over two years now. I mean, actively, I've been writing for over five years, but I, I launched into the um, copywriting space about um, two years ago. And then, I mean, it's been so exciting. And um, I'm an undergraduate also currently in um, Nigeria. So I guess that's just a brief of my background and how I got here. That's interesting. That's interesting, Samuel. Um, yeah. Now, you are, you are in Lagos today, right? Yeah. Okay. So were you born in Lagos or did you come to Lagos? Yeah, I was born in Lagos. My parents um, have been in Lagos since childhood. So, ah, so you, are a, you are a Lagosian or something? <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm a negotiator by a bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, from, I'm, I'm from Kara State, specifically in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Well, it's one country, yeah. it's Nigeria. We can, we are free to move uh, to any part of the country we want to move to. No, no doubt about okay. that. I'm just like trying to understand yeah. where, where the origin is from. Oh, wow. No, no problem. No problem. All right. Tell me about your growing up in Lagos. Uh, what do you see around you? I mean, what is the... Um, the kind of experience you have growing up in Lagos, and um, tell us something about that. What part of Lagos, Ivo? Well, okay, um, my parents first stayed in Sule in Lagos, and then um, before they now moved to um, Ipo, where they are currently now, or where we are currently now. <laughs> All right, um, growing up in Lagos as so, Lagos is this um, ever busy city where um, everyone is trying to make ends meet in the fastest and easiest way possible. I mean, it's more like the economic hub of the country where um, things boom easily. And then Lagos, living in Lagos, it's um, really, for me, I would say it's, it's stressful, a lot stressful. I mean, because of the traffic congestions every day, um, the stress you just have to go through going out and coming in. But while it's stressful, it's also very fun because there are a lot of opportunities, a whole lot of opportunities on the island, on the mainland, for um, um, and any type of skill, really. I mean, a lot of people come to Lagos just with nothing. <laughs> and then with just um, networking and code, they're able to um, get something for themselves. So really, that's, that's how it's been for me. Lagos is fun, and then growing up in Lagos. But well, personally, I'll say um, I would not love to um, <laughs> like um, base in Lagos because of um, some personal reasons. So I guess that's it. So you say you like Lagos for some personal reason, or you don't like Lagos for some personal reason? I, I said I would not like to um, um, base, like if I was going to, um, um, what is the word now? Um, pick my base. <laughs> I would Lagos. Not like in Lagos, why? Because I mean, what I do, it's I feel um Lagos is um the with where I just said now, Lagos is more of um it's it's the opportunities that are there are more with uh, physical jobs now. So and for what I do, sorry, for what I do, um it's uh, more of like I said, freelance remote jobs. So I don't need to um face myself in a busy community. I mean, there are other nice places that. <laughs> In Nigeria, that are really nice and they're cool and they're very fun. So that's just it, really. Do, do you want to talk more about that? Um, in that, maybe for example, say maybe you were in Kwara State today, or you are yeah. uh, somewhere in uh, Imo State or or Kaduna. Are you able to do what you are doing uh, currently? Is that what you mean by that? Instead of maybe okay. all the hosts busting in Lagos and still doing the same thing. Uh, are you exactly. saying that you could actually be in another part of a more tranquil part of Nigeria as you run your business smoothly? Exactly, exactly. That's what I mean. I mean, what as I said, um, I work remotely, so I can be anywhere in the world and then work easily, and then still um, make as much as um, I make and even better. Really. So 
my job for what I do basically is not tied to a particular location. I mean, currently, or maybe we'll still get into that, but I mean, let's just, let's just leave it at that. What about a facility that you need to do your job, uh, like uh, light? Uh, of course, this is something that is coming up again and again now. When we look at the political aspect of the of this conversation, of course, not with you yeah. today. You are not a politician, but uh, we've talked a lot about politics, uh, especially looking at the 2023 that is coming up. Uh, yeah. We need to talk about the issue that is affecting the Nigeria citizens. Uh, one of these is infrastructure. Since 1999, we see these politicians that have been tossing up around. They don't do the job. They look for a way to always justify it. So something as yeah. simple as electricity is an issue that could have been resolved so that you don't need to jam up all the people in Lagos and people are just basically suffering. Uh, you could yeah. live anywhere in the country and still be happy and be contributed to, to the country. So because yeah. you did be mention the fact that you could actually be in another place uh, other than Lagos, okay. I've tried to sort of think uh, what could be uh, the consequences in terms of the infrastructure. Uh, what do you want to say about that? Oh, well, I'll say, um, of course, Lagos has a lot of... Um, it has, there's, there's, there's the edge in Lagos in terms of infrastructure, in terms of um, um, lights and other resources. But I feel, and I can only say, I mean, Lagos is just one of them. I mean, there are other places. I also, um, I stayed quite a while in Ibadan, also, your state now. And then uh, they are um, good as, as, what is the word now? The, as, as good infrastructure as I would have loved is available also in all of those places. So, I mean, it's the basic things when it talks about um, infrastructure like um, electricity, um, network access, and all of those, I feel it's not, it's not limited to um, just Lagos. So, any other place, especially now, of course, we have to also look into the place of security now because of um, some other security challenges that are um, available in the country. But, I mean, overall, I mean, Lagos is just one of those places that you can uh, get good infrastructure. There are other um, really, really nice places in the country also where you do you do just fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Okay, so this uh, question of is security everywhere, I hope it's not also affecting Lagos. Uh, not really. Yeah, it's more this the what we read and then this what I see. I don't think it's more it's more of in the um the north and the southeast region. So that's that's it really. Uh, now, uh, how did you get started into content creation? Or actually, into content writing and uh, what you are doing today as your business. Okay. Um. Well, personally, I I used to believe. I still believe. <laughs> that um, I have a uh, special gift of creativity. And then um, I remember um, growing up as a child, anytime I take up a pen to just write something, it seems like there's this stream of flow of thoughts that just comes and then it's like, okay, you just start writing. And then, I mean, there's always inspiration. So um, that was what led me to create a blog personally, I think five or six years ago. I can't remember the specific time. So I had a blog, then I started um, writing personally based on what um, inspires me, based on um, um, personal convictions and all. So um, that's then I got to know that, okay, I, mean, I can monetize this too. And then also expand for that. That's when I now launched into copywriting. Copywriting is quite different from just content writing, really, because of um, the hope and then what it is directed towards. So launching into copywriting, I had to, um, sorry, I had to learn how to um, give myself to um, growing. I actually saw, I actually um, enrolled for a bootcamp course then to learn copywriting basics and all. And then since then, it's really been amazing. So that's just um, a little advance to what I have currently now. And uh, what do you mean by cut copywriting? Uh, because you also said that it's different from other type of writing. Can you help us yeah. understand that? All right. Um, copywriting is writing to sell or writing to spark a reaction in terms of what we call leads now. now other type of writing, let's start both. There are just less for um, simplicity sake. We can just put them into two categories: copywriting and then content writing. Uh, content writing is basically for um, awareness, just to 
pass across an information. Like, okay, someone saying, um, 15 ways you can, um, um, okay, let's just say 15 ways you can get started schooling for free in maybe in the US or something. So something like that is just content writing, just trying to pass across an information. I want to talk about copywriting now. Copywriting is more of a persuasive type of writing, trying to lead people to take certain actions. In most times is to lead people to maybe make a subscription, um, buy a product, or um, just to um, maybe just bring them into the, um, the community or something. So it's way, way, way different. It's way, way different. There are skills, there are certain um, skills that are imputed in copywriting that are, um, that's, I mean, any type of normal content writer would not need. And then there are certain, um, what's the word now? Certain practices that we actually put to, um, that, um, put to use to ensure that, um, the goal of leading people to take action is achieved. So that's it. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, um, because you said there is this, um, uh, differences between, uh, copywriting and other type of writing. Uh, could you tell me uh, what are the specific uh, skills one might need to become a good copywriter? All right. Um, one of the skills, like I said, is being able to write persuasively. Now, okay, um, you are trying to um, market this product now. Or, let me just say it in this simple term. A copywriter is more like, more of a marketer than a writer, basically. You are trying to market this product, and then you have to see how that. Um, you're able to capture the attention of your reader. You're able to niche down to understand their needs. And then through that, you are now able to post the um, products or the service or whatever you are marketing as the solution. So really, you are trying to do a lot of things at the same time. You're trying to understand um, what is the emotion of this particular um, set of customers. What is, there's something we call the customer persona. And what, what, what it means is, um, the, the kind of log or details of, um, like an hypothetical customer. Like, okay, this person is this particular years old, or let's say in this year, range of years, this person is maybe married with kids. This person is this and that. So what, what we are trying to achieve is getting the pain point of that customer. And then with the understanding of that pain point now, we are able to pose the product or the service as a solution to that pain point. And then really we are just trying to make sure that um, we're able to key into the emotional states and then be able to use um, our product or to be able to pose our product or the product really as a solution to that particular pain point or problem. So um, that's some of the special skills. As I said, it's way, way different from just um, writing content, writing or so. All right. Now, what for you would make a great copywriting? Because you'll be doing it for some time now. I mean, it was your assessment, your judgment. Okay. Well, for me, a great copywriting is the one that is able to produce results. There's what we call conversion rate. Conversion rate is the rate at which um, um, your copy was able to drive in the particular results that it was intended for. So really, a great copywriting is the one that is able to make that um, achieve a good conversion rate in terms of the people for the rate and the number of those that saw the copy versus those that actually took the actions that you intended. So really, um, that's what makes um, great copywriting. All right. Uh, now, a kind of a curiosity. Uh, was okay. there a time that you were not good enough in copywriting that you needed to learn the skills and things like that? What kind of difficulty did you face at that time, if any, or maybe you already came out and you were already expert in it? <laughs> well, no, 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 no one is expert at the beginning. So well, uh, I faced a lot of challenges. Like I said earlier, um, I was into content writing from the very um, start. And then I now discovered that, okay, I could market this skill. That's when I now learned about, okay, there's something that's called copywriting. So, okay, now I went, um, I had to learn. Like I said, I actually had to subscribe to a, um, a boot camp, a writing boot camp, a, a copywriting boot camp that I had to pay for to learn, to know the ropes of, um, the ropes of this art of 
copywriting. And then, then um, starting out really, I, I remember um, looking into some of the copies I wrote some two, two and uh, let's say three years um, ago, and then looking at it currently, it's my current skill now, I'm like, wow, okay, wow, you have so much improved. And then um, learning is just um, continuous. Some of the challenges you face when um, you just know that, okay, you are not there yet, is um, the feedback you get from the clients you are working for. Like I said, um, most clients that come to you for copywriting is because they want to maybe market a product or a service. And I'm writing such and then not getting the particular uh, or not, not able, not being able to um, help the client to achieve his particular goal or conversion rate now. I mean, it's to me, that's failure for a copywriter. So those are some of the challenges that I also personally faced at this start that um, also pushed me to continue to learn better. So that's it. Uh-huh. Thank you for that, Samway. I appreciate that. Um, now, how do you embark on, uh, similarly, for example, a client uh, give you a job to do now, a copywriting for uh, for a business uh, he or she want to uh, promote or say, and they want you to write uh, the copy for it. Uh, how do you embark on the research to be sure that what you're going to come out with is going to be a great writing? Wow. Okay. Um, firstly, I'd like to say um, everything in this world are in niches or they are in industries. Now, um, if a client is bringing a particular product now, okay, you're like, what industry is this product um, in? And so with that understanding now, you go into research to understand what are the things or what are the trends what are the patterns in this particular industry? Now, that's one of the first steps. For me, that's one of the first steps out of the case. You first learn to know, okay, this is this industry that this product is in. Then, okay, what are the trends in this industry? How do I now go about um, understanding the competition? Because really, um, the problem majorly is that there are a lot of competitions and then you're trying to make people to see that my product is the best. Or people are trying to make people see that their product is the best. So understanding the industry, then going to understand the competition. Okay, what is the competition doing? What are these guys putting into practice? How do these guys market their own set of products? And then from that understanding, they're able to also because um like the research phase is is is, is like um 70% or maybe 80% of the entire work that the copyright are putting because he has to understand competition, you have to understand how these guys are doing their own thing. And I also trying to find out flaws in the competition's approach to marketing and then using that understanding now to write the copy. So after understanding the competition, it's now understanding also the customer base or the pain points basically of the customers. And they are like, okay, this competition, are they really, um, how best are they trying to meet the needs of this customer? If um, these, are, these are the things I've outlined as the pain points of this custom, and then I look at what the competition is doing, and I'm like, okay, it's like these guys are actually doing so well. How can we do this better? So really, those are the starting points to um, every copywriting task that um, I um, take up. All right. Uh, I think on your LinkedIn page, I was reading a line that I found it trust uh, in, uh, mm-hmm. and it reads, I have big brands and startups uh, write sales copy that converts like crazy. That is very yeah. interesting for me. <laughs> Do you yeah. want to tell me more about that? <laughs> All right. Um, so um, conversion is a big deal in this um, in this act or this craft. <laughs> the goal is to be able to make sure that um, conversion rates are up. And really, you discover that many times that people come to a copywriter for a particular job, it's not like maybe they've not had a copy, basically. It's not like they don't have something on their own that they have written to be able to push out their product or something. But really, most times, it's just like that stuff or what they have put out is not bringing in the results that they desire. So they come to a copywriter, okay, can you help us with this? What can you do for us? Or how can you help us to make sure that our conversion rate is up? So that's what the whole concept is about. I help big brands now. Big brands are these established companies, I mean, and then there are also small startups or startups basically, those that are just um, in the burden phase. 
and maybe like they even have um, any copy that is written out. Now, sales copies um, are what I do basically. So we write sales or I write sales copies for these brands to be able to ensure that they are able to get the conversions. Now, it's not it's not rocket science. Now, it's not it's not magic really. But I mean, we just put in our best to ensure that we're able to um, increase the conversion rates of these brands and to make sure that they are getting the results they desire. So that's it. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, and how do this your client feel about the content that you write for them? Yeah, really. Like I said, um, there's always um, great feedbacks. At, from, I, at least from the beginning now, you don't always, um, I mean, when I started writing or when I started copywriting, there's always the need for, there's something we call revisions where the client is like, okay, what you wrote is, <laughs> you know what I actually desire. So you have to go back to write again. So those are part of the things that help me to now develop better. So at least right now, I believe that um, based on feedback we get from clients and based on the results that you actually see, you know that, okay, your work is actually bringing in um, good returns. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, optimization. Uh, because okay. uh, sales copy actually they are very interested in that. Uh, that is where you do the selling because if you get yeah. it wrong, you are not going to get it selling at the end of the day. Especially yeah. when you are looking at uh, online uh, marketing, online sales. Uh, yeah. Now, how do you optimize content writing for website? Because now maybe most of the copy are going to be on uh, sitting on the website, uh, using yeah, exactly. maybe on page SEO and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, there are, um, like you said, there are on-page SEO techniques and there are off-page SEO techniques. As a copywriter, well, the off-page is not really um, what is on you, basically. You are basically interested in the on-page SEO techniques. Now, this involves um, keyword research. This involves linking strategies, um, what we call backlinks, and also internal linking now. Now, the thing is, like you said, when we write um, copies, it's mostly on the internet. And then many people that actually land or land on the website of these companies, they land on the website based on search engines, using search engines now. And then search engines lead them to this website by the keywords that they type into it. So there's a whole lot about keyword research that is also into when um, copywriting about learning um, what we get. There are different um, tools we use for keyword research, we use um, Google Search Console, we use Ahrefs, we use SMrush. Those are just some of the big names that um, is put into place to be able to get, um, to understand keywords now. So that keywords and then how to place these keywords, placing accurately these keywords in the copy is one of the big deal about optimization. So keywords is one. The other the other is um, backlink um, linking techniques. Now, backlinks are the links that um, link to the sites, and then internal linking are the links within the sites. So we, we also look at um, ensuring that we're able to link within the site, and also um, um, what's the word now? Look at um, techniques to get backlinks into the sites, and then also to also link to other external sources that are credible. Now, this. Um, concept of optimization is like another aspect of copywriting because like if we're going to put it um, rightly there is the place of sales copies really most times sales copies are not um uh really directed towards a particular sense of optimization and there's also seo copywriting which is where um you're actually writing maybe for uh content of websites now and these are the content that really require um, optimization. So really, like I just want to, I just to make that um, difference clear so that we are not mixing things up. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you are here so that we cannot mix things up. We are listening to you. You know, you are the expert. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. Uh, two things actually remain uh, sticking in my head. No? Uh, one okay. is keywords and the other is SEO. Uh, yeah. What do we even mean by these terms for the average people who do not have a good grasp of it? Okay, um, keywords. When we talk about keywords, keywords are just as literal as they sound. 
keywords. Now, when we talk about keywords, keywords are the search queries or the search terms that people impute into search engines when they are looking for something online. So, um, there is a particular search term for an industry. Like, okay, let's assume now, okay, someone wants to buy something online and it's like um, the best. Okay, let's assume someone wants to buy um, a particular shoe online and it's like, okay, the best shoes to buy in 2022. And that's a particular keyword phrase that um, it's linked to, um, or when you input that into a search engine, it brings about a whole lot of results. So that is the concept of what we call keywords, basically. So keywords are those search phrase, phrases or queries that people input into search engines when they are looking for something online. And then also SEO, basically. SEO, our keywords are under SEO. So um, SEO is like the general category. Also, also SEO, we say talk about search engine optimization. And the goal of search engine optimization is such that when people input those keywords into the search queries, the websites of the um, of the clients now that we write for are able to come up on the result pages. So we are trying to ensure that okay, we are writing such that when people put these keywords into uh, maybe Google or something, when they click okay, when Google lists out the results, the client's results or the client's website now are on those pages or on those results. We call them search, search engine result pages. So the goal is to ensure that those pages are there. And then the whole process of ensuring this is what we call SEO or search engine optimization. I hope um, it's clear now. Yeah, yeah, it's clear. It's clear now. It's clear. Yeah. We're here to make these things clear for the people that are listening to us so that uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they can better b- uh, profit from it, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, are there some writing techniques to make your copy come out better um, in the competition? Yeah, of course. Now, one of them is um, my forte, really, and you will see on my um, LinkedIn profile, which is storytelling. Now, storytelling is one of the um, ingredients or vital ingredients, or let me let's like say deadly weapon <laughs> in the arsenal of the copywriter. Now, we use storytelling to be able to attract data and then also create an emotional link with um, the people that we are writing for. I mean, the clients, not the clients now, but the customers or the direct people that we will want to read the copies. So storytelling, we use storytelling to be able to um, not just talk about theories, but illustrate it with stories. Now, we start to show that um, there is a way or a special way people react to stories than when they are just reading words. People, um, when we talk about stories, when people read stories, they create the picture in their heads. Um, there is this um, study I learned about how that um, stories release. There is this particular, um, I can't remember the name of the, um, the stuff now that storytelling releases in the brain. I can't remember the, So that storytelling releases that particular, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to get the word now that we use, that science use call it now. So storytelling releases that particular, let's just say chemical now in the brain. Now, stories basically releases that chemical in the brain that makes people relate better with things. Now, you remember I was saying now that we try to decode the pain point of um, customers and then be able to write something that fits that pain point. Now, instead of just writing something in plain terms that fits that pain point, why not tell it with stories? Now, that's the great storytelling window. And then it is a proven technique that works again and again and again. So we use stories like okay, talking about that pain point, putting it into the story. Okay, so now let's let me just use this example of um there was one I recently wrote about it's a jewelry, it's a jewelry solution company. Now they try to um, help people sell their jewelries and link them to customers that will buy those jewelries. Now there's this pain point of many jewelry sellers is the fact of not being able to link to credible buyers or not being able to get regular sales, basically. So this company now is trying to serve as a middleman between the jewelry sellers and then the buyers. So we used to be telling in the sense of illustrating that pain point of not being able to get a credible buyer 
talking about some of the effects and then posing the client or the customer now as the um um what do they call it now the the uh I remember the word now I think the proponent or something now or the um the one that actually wins at the end really so maybe our intention in essence is that storytelling helps us to connect to the customers in a much more firm way and a much more relatable manner. So that's one of the major, major tools that um, copywriters use to ensure that the goal of making sales is active. Mm-hmm. And, and how do you yourself use story in your copywriting? Yeah, yeah, that's our thing, right? That's what I was trying to illustrate the, the one about the jewelry company that I was talking about. And it was, we use stories, tell stories, tell stories of, um, I, I just can't, I can't, if, if I'm going to start talking about it now, more like talking about, um, basic concept of stories or storytelling. But really, we tell us, we use, um, tell stories in our copies to be able to ensure, to be able to ensure that, um, um, the clients are able to, or the customers now, I would to easily connect with all you are saying. And then really it leads um, them to making sales decisions easily and faster, really. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm yeah. trying to see maybe either it's a way people can connect with you. How can they do that? Okay. Um, well, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn.com forward slash Samuel slash dash Oyatoye. That's my um, LinkedIn handle. Or maybe um, you can also just share the LinkedIn handle on um, this podcast or something. It will be added to the links or something. So LinkedIn is that. Or you can also reach out to me via email. Or you have to follow her at gmail.com. So I'm always available for anyone <laughs> that's willing to um, use my services on my speech. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Now, uh, what would be your final thought in the conversation that we have had today? Maybe a message or you want to reinforce a line that you find important? Uh, um, one thing that I guess while I was talking, one thing that just stood out to me was the place of making people understand that copywriting is um, what helps them to make as much sales as they want. I know, you know, I've, I've seen that a lot of people actually, a lot of clients really, um, they just, um, write based on what they've seen. Now, there's a difference between what we call, um, benefits and features. Now, some of this understanding of how that we push benefits and not talk about features are what copywriters have owned for the past years. I mean, when I mean own, H-O-N-E now, with, Use this for the past and this understanding that make sure that clients or customers now make buying decisions. So I mean, um, clients should always understand the need to also always reach out to a copywriter to be able to get that result, that conversion that they really desire. Because really, content writing, like I said earlier, is way different from copywriting. And then content writing is what many people do, and then they actually call it copywriting to be able to make sure. So I guess I just want to um. We enforce that in, the, in this discussion that it's always nice to reach out to the copywriter and then we sure get the results. I maybe mean, I like, like I said, I think I said it earlier also, it's not magic, but at least you get um good results um than just um trying to push your product out there based on what you just think you feel like. Right. So I mean that's just like a passing phrase for me. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Obehe podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehe Ewafo. Thank you so much for listening and talk to you in the next episode.